We are now talking to actress, producer, and founder of the OG Etiquette Expert.com, Zoe Yeoman. What's going on, Zoe? Hey, gentlemen, I'm doing very well. How are you tonight? Well, I mean, I, you just heard the opening act over here. I yes, mean, I did. Yeah, you have the opportunity to look at this greasy hair man. I mean, over here, he's not wearing a hat. I don't understand it. Uh, but anyways, how are you? Tell us a little bit about um, what you're doing with the OG etiquette expert dot com. Well, you know, there's etiquette in everything. So uh, sports included. And I spent a lot of time chatting with people about things that are that are happening and things that could be going better. And, you know. How not to stand up in the in when a pitcher's in the middle of trying to get something across <laughs> the plate because the people behind you miss the pitch. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my jam. Yeah, well, my jam is, uh, you know, once in a blue moon, blowing my nose and looking at this guy across the table to me. So obviously there's nothing new about that. But anyways, uh, as everybody knows, we are talking to actress, producer, and founder of OG Etiquette. Uh, expert.com Zoe Yeoman. So Zoe, tell us a little bit about your career. You've been in the movie business. You're an actress, you're a producer, you're doing all these different things your whole career. What is it like uh, getting involved in, in a business that is just so, it, it could get so stressful. I mean, obviously we we've talked to so many different uh, actors, producers, and even movie stars. What is it like doing all that stuff? Well, you know, whenever there's a lot of money involved, there's a lot of pressure. So we can ask Derek Jeter about that. Mm. Lots of pressure. And so one of the most important things that we can do in my business is always try to keep our cool. And the people who keep their cool and who know what they're doing and, and uh, know how to treat people, they tend to do very well, especially if they're talented. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, and the people maybe who... who uh, like to flap around and peacock and, and behave badly. A lot of times they, they can crash and burn just because, you know, what goes up might come down, must come down. Right. Well, Speedy's a peacock, but I, he's a good guy, but he's a peacock. <laughs> so does that imply I'm a flightless bird or I'm colorful? <laughs> <laughs> no, the main thing is to be is to be good to people, regardless of mm. what business you're in. If the pressure gets to you, then maybe you should be doing something else, mm. raising peacocks, mm. for example. Mm. No, yeah. I, I wouldn't be good at that. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question comes amidst teams and games that have controversy. We see fans all the time heckling and booing uh, referees, especially when they have bad calls. One of the most extreme cases came with the Dallas Cowboys fans against the 49ers this postseason. So what is your what is your thoughts with instances like that where a lot of these, not only fans, coaches and players as well towards referees if they do make a quote-unquote controversial call? Yeah. You know, these guys are all supposed to be old enough to know better. So that's the first thing. And then there's sportsmanship. That's not necessarily number two, but it's the second thing. And then you got to think about the message that you're sending to young people, um, the kids who are watching the games and, and uh, who are in the stands and, and whether that be a local high school team or a college team, you know, it just looks really bad on people. Mm. And uh, there's really no excuse for it. There's just no excuse for it. Violence is never a good thing. I don't care if you're in a in a stadium or a street corner. It's just not okay. So um, puts puts us all in a bad place, you know. Not to mention the fact that sometimes people really get hurt. And I wonder if after the fact they stop and think, you know, if I had just not lost my temper, would I have just gotten fined? Would people be calling me names? Would I be getting all kinds of, you know, hate on social media? You know, you just, it's always about your reaction. That's the thing that separates us from the animals, right? We get to choose in any given moment our reaction. You know, you, you, you say this, and I agree with you totally, but there are a lot of people in this business that are rude, disgusting, a.k.a. Stephen A. Smith or even Mike Francesa over the years, disgusting to the fans. They, they, they throw people under the bus. They attack different teams. They attack owners. They attack coaches. And guess what they get? They get more money, and people get, get fired. Paid. Yes. So maybe 
you might be right being nice to people, but maybe once in a blue moon you have a crazy person like Stephen A. Smith or even Mike Francesa, or who knows, anybody that you want to point out and point your fingers at and say, that guy's rude, Derek Jeter being one of them, by the way. I've interviewed him three times, and he was very rude to me, so uh, no wonder why he decided to walk away from the ownership CEO position of the Marlins. I'm not surprised. That's my opinion. You get what you play for, and, and, and I understand. Look, I love sports. I'm a sports girl. I since I was a little kid on the couch with my dad watching mm. football and watching sports. I I totally hear you. But just think back. I mean, McEnroe and his bad behavior. Mm-hmm. We don't have to go back that far. But <laughs> I mean, he's kind of he started this thing, right? We all know Johnny. Back. We know Johnny and, Mac. And they just, it just keeps going. And I wonder, you know, sometimes and now with social media, forget about it. It's oh, everywhere. Uh, social forget media it. has ruined everything. Let me tell you. Isn't it though? Uh, but people love it. You know why? Because that's the way the people are making money now. I mean, obviously, if you have a, a million followers on TikTok, well, guess what? What are they going to do? They're going to market through that, and you're going to make bu- a bundle of money if you have a bundle of money. Yeah. I saw a girl the other day with a puppy. And she's in college and she said, this dog just paid my rent this month, <laughs> right? From all the, the money yeah. on social media and everything. So I hope I answered your question. Absolutely. You know, you know that, like the Eagles fans have a really bad yes. rap, right? I mean, it's, it's just so regional and... I think they do it on purpose. Well, well, hold on one second. They have a bad rap because after they won the Super Bowl, you see them eating, you know, eating, uh, what is it? Uh, dog dog poop. And... Dog poop or horse poop on the side of the road and climbing poles and throwing up on people up in the air. I mean, I mean. Like, well, are they happy they won? Or were they... It's Philadelphia. We'll never know. <laughs> the, the Phillies parade had something similar. I think they lit some girl's hair on fire or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Philly, man. Anyway. Oh, well, we, we're from New York, so if if the Jets ever win a Super Bowl, I can only imagine what the Jet fans are going to be doing 51 years later. Okay? Yeah, you know, after 51 years, they deserve to be a little naughty. It's all right. Well, I, I'm one of those naughty people, so who knows? If the Jets win the Super Bowl, I guess I'm running on the Brooklyn Bridge uh, naked or something with a sign saying, <laughs> we won finally after 50 some odd years. <laughs> Thank you. Speedy will be like, there's Errol. We'll be watching him on the Bronco. Are you kidding me? I'm going to have Speedy running on the other side. Oh, God. I'll run away. (laughs) (laughs) I'll get out of there. Plus, I don't need. Plus, I'm a Giants fan. I don't need to witness a Jets parade. Not that I have any grudge with the Jets, but. Understood. Uh, as everybody knows, we are talking to actress, producer, and founder of the OG Etiquette Expert.com, Zoe Yeoman. So, Zoe, obviously in the movie business, tell us a little bit about working. It's a cutthroat business. Everybody's trying to get into it. And, and you, we see all these movie stars. Brad Pitt, we all know the story of Brad Pitt. His picture was on a wall. Somebody picked it out. He was in Thelma and Louise. And then all of a sudden, he became a superstar because of his looks. Tom Cruise, uh, he was in The Outsiders. You know, all the different things that he did as a young a young uh, movie star in the early 80s and then became a superstar for Days of Thunder and all that other stuff. What is it like working with these movie stars? Are they as bad as what people think they are behind the scenes? Tom Cruise is a super nice man, believe it or not. Um, he's just under a lot of pressure. Mm. Like these producers, you know, the the Kevin Costners, the, um, what's his name, Braveheart? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, Mel, Mel Gibson. Gibson. Yes. Mel Gibson. These guys are under a tremendous amount of pressure. Like you, you're responsible for millions of dollars for 300 person crews for locations. And now with COVID, I mean, they're under a tremendous amount of pressure. So to answer your question, a lot of times they are super decent people. Mm. And then other times, not so much. Mm. Right. And that gets talked about that and it gets shared and and everybody knows who those people might be that you know could be a little difficult to work with um i enjoy the business a lot uh i've been doing it off and on since i was a kid Uh, it's it's something i do really really well so it's kind of hard to walk away from it forever Mm. even though i've tried um i've done other things i've always been really successful at whatever i've tried to do but golly there's just nothing like uh being on a stage Mm. And, uh, I, you know, I, I grew up in the theater. That's where I got trained. Right. Mm. And so, you know, now with television and film and I kind of do, I kind of do everything. I actually just started my own theater company just so 
you know, when I'm not on film, when I'm, when I'm not on, on set somewhere, I can still, I still have that creative outlet. It's pressure driven. It can be a real pain in the tuchus, Mm. you know, and, and we just all do the best we can because we love the creative aspect of it. Mm. So you actually were born in Germany uh, way back. Nope. Wrong. Wrong. Oh, Oh, no. No, I went to high school in Germany. Okay, ah. okay, that's fine. All right, so whatever article. Curveballs now, Speedy. No, well, the, the, thank you, whoever article was that misled me. Mm. But all right, so, so what were some of those experiences like culturally, and also from an adjustment standpoint, because you study etiquette a lot of the times. Like, how are they over in comparison to now your experiences in the U.S. and even some of the other countries that you've been to? Well, you know, you always have rules, right? So like we also lived on Okinawa for four years, which is an island that's just south of Japan, part of of Japan. And, you know, when you go into your home, when you go into a Japanese home, you always take your shoes off. So there are things like this that we learned in various places that we lived. Um, I loved being in Germany. We had a great time. Uh, It's where I learned how to drink beer. Mm. Um, Very nice. yeah, and you know, bratwurst and schnitzel and all that good stuff. Some Guinness and, and <laughs> skiing, doing the shushing, you know. And so it was a great four years. You know, my dad was um, military; he was an Air Force enlisted man, and we did not stay on the base. We were having dinner in France and Austria, skiing for two weeks. We kind of lived the life of a really, really wealthy. Fa- we just had it made. It was great. I will always remember the years we were overseas. Mm. Um, really good for the cultural, the, the different cultural aspects of it, the food. They get to travel so much more than we do, mainly because their countries are kind of so close together and, you know, and ours are so super spread out. Um, but I tell you, it's such great training for young people. Mm-hmm. Um, to be able to travel like that. Do they wear underwear on their head over there? I mean, I heard, <laughs> I heard they do that. <laughs> are, we talking about, are we talking about football clubs now? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they do in England. <laughs> Well, I've been to Germany. I was a DJ. I actually traveled around the country and around the world uh, in my 20s. So I had the opportunity to go to New Zealand. I've been to Germany. I've been to, uh, well, where else? I've been all over Poland, uh, Ukraine. I was in Ukraine for a little while. Um, By the way, shout out to the Ukraine army fighting off the Russians. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's horrible what's going on in the world. But uh, unfortunately, well, fortunate that we're here and nothing is happening here, but it's unfortunate for some of the innocent people that are dying over there. You probably read about Roman Abramovich today, right? Yes. Who's selling the Chelsea FC and yes. then donating all of that money. That's great. Like, it's a fantastic story. And, and, and hopefully, uh, when, when this is all over and hopefully it ends that Ukraine doesn't be conquered by Russia because it, it's horrible. You got the president over there fighting for Ukraine. You have uh, all these boxers fighting for their country. It, it's horrible what's, what, what's going on. And it's all about really it's greed. And that's what it is. That's the, that's the whole thing of this war. It's, it's one country trying to take over a country that they thought they owned and they want all the, the power sources in the country. I think the mayor of Kiev too is an ex boxer as well. Yeah. It's just, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. We, I think they have right on their side. I think we're going to win it. I think they're going to win it. I hope so. I think they're going to take them. There's going to be loss of life and and there's going to be a lot of rebuilding figuratively and literally, Mm. but I think that the Ukrainians are going to take them because they're just like, no, we're this, this is not happening. You are not going to do this. We could us. only hope to see that happen. And hopefully yeah. we don't get involved. I see what we're doing right now. And I, I'm not a political person. This is a sports radio show. But uh-huh. I, I'm happy that we're staying away from this right now unless we get pulled in. Because once we get pulled in, it could start a whole ruckus of craziness that's going on. It definitely be bad. Yes. But I think a no-fly zone, I think in order to give them a fair and fighting chance... NATO needs to do a no-fly zone to try to help them. Absolutely. I think think that's how they'll come out of this. Absolutely. 